Who wants Nate's notes? <laughs> He'll be in the back. He'll be in the back signing them later. Um, Anna. Where's Anna? Hi. She tweeted me. <laughs> um, <laughs> or no, no, texted me. Okay, so here's the deal. I didn't write out anything either because I feel like I'm much more better when I'm off the cuff. And I'm also super excited because I am essentially opening for Ryan Eller. And I am <laughs> And, um, you know, I am just a huge Live, live Your List um, fan. So there you go. <laughs> um, so first, I want you to think about any questions that you might want to ask me at the end um, regarding encouragement, because I want this to be interactive, and I know that this is one of the only places that I could say, shout at me at answers, and I'm going to get answers. Right? You're not all going to sit there just staring at me. Right. So <laughs> that's I'm going to practice that today. So... Um, but I want you to think about if you have specific ideas of, I would like to encourage someone, dot, 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 I don't know how, let's pick April's brain in front of everyone and see if she can come up with an answer, okay? So I'm gonna take two of those at the end. Um, so this is what I need your help with. I need you to shout out what you think the hardest part of having cancer is. And if you know the answer because you've been speaking with me, don't shout that out. <laughs> what do you think the hardest part of being sick and having cancer is? Hmm? Pity, from Pity from other people, the unknown. Okay, Pe like pessimistic people. Okay, having to tell your family. Okay. Fear of dying. Yeah. Wow, you guys are coming up with very different answers than were in my head. I think chemo, radiation, medical bills. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> poison being injected into you all the time. Um, nurses gloving up because it's so dangerous, and they're like, let's stick it in your veins. And you're like, yes, thanks, please do that. Um, okay. <laughs> so speak, speak to anyone six months or a year after they have gone through something like cancer, um, the death of a spouse, um, childhood sexual abuse um, or having a child with a disability, um, a disability, you uh, might be surprised to hear them say that the hardest part is after it's done. So, hey April, you're in remission. And everyone says, yay. Yay! And I say, big whoop, right? I'm 30, 30 at the time. Um, so that leaves me, what, like 70 years <laughs> to get to wonder if it ever comes back, right? So that gives me uh, two checkups a year to get nervous <laughs> because something could be back. Um, so the hardest part is afterward, right? So he says you're in remission and I finally get to take a breath and then I fall apart. But everybody else sees She's in remission. She should be back to her old self. And that's not what happens. <laughs> because cancer changed me. I am a completely different person than I was before. I see the world differently. I'm not as cynical. I'm more compassionate. I am way more patient. <laughs> um, I'm just a much nicer person <laughs> since being sick. And I wouldn't give up what I had to go through um, to be who I was before. So. Um, I know I should have had it written out, Randy, but I don't. I just have notes. Okay, so here we go. Um, and I sure that, I'm sure that you've done it because I've done it. I've looked at someone who's had a divorce and been like, it's been two years. Get over it already. Or, um, you know, like, shouldn't you be used to this by now? But I've never gone through a divorce, so I don't know how that works. Or someone who has had a cancer. I, don't, I didn't really know a lot of people who had been sick before, so this was kind of new to me. But I probably would have thought, it's over. Like, Get over yourself, right? So, um, but I have a lot more compassion. Um, so what I want to leave you guys with today are I want to um, give you some bullet points of how I think that you can uh, educate people on how 
life is after things. Because if I went through this room and I said, you, 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 all tell me uh, something, an uh, um, adversity that you've been with, been through, you would all have something. And we would all be, that's so bad. But then the next person has something. Oh, that's so bad. Oh, that's so bad. But we've all had it, but we don't talk about it. So if you don't hear anything that else I say today, I want you to hear that Satan wins when we're quiet. Okay? He wins. And I'm so sick of him winning. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> silence is darkness, and whenever we speak the truth, it's light. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I have become incredibly honest since being sick. I just don't care what people think of me anymore. Um, I'm going to be me because I like who I am. I know who God made me to be. And because I know that it gives power to other people whenever I acknowledge what I've been through. Um, my mouth has just got totally dry. Like I drink a whole single lemonade. Okay. <laughs> um, so here's one thing. I only have two points. So the one thing that you can do is talk about it. Talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, talk about it some more. Just keep talking about it. Don't have a pity party because as Roundy knows, <laughs> I don't tolerate pity parties. <laughs> right? Like I'm a social worker, but I don't have that bleeding heart. Like I'm a fix it. So that's what I do. Um, so talk about it, don't have a pity party about it. But you need to be talking about, this is how I'm feeling. Say um, you suffer with anxiety. Um, if you can, um, there was one time, because I used to have really bad anxiety, I would make myself go to choir practice even though it was really overwhelming and I was really scared. And so one day, I, it was in a big church and it, I just hadn't gotten to know anyone yet. And so I went up to this lady and said, I'm really nervous. <laughs> like, I just want to tell you like how anxious I am and like how real this is for me and like I'm not kidding <laughs> like I'm about to walk out and I just needed to tell you <gasps> thank you so much <laughs> that's so much better okay so um but I just needed to tell you and did she react the way I wanted her to no did she make me feel super better no but I felt really empowered that I had acknowledged it to her and said it and it wasn't her responsibility to fix it, but it is my responsibility to own it. Um, and that's a whole other speech, so we won't go there. Um, <laughs> so just talk about it, you know? Um, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to make jokes about it. And if you haven't healed what Melissa said, right, get some healing first. Because if you're coming from brokenness, you're just going to break other people. Yeah. And um, it's not okay <laughs> to do that. So you need to go and find, like when I was suffering from anxiety and depression, I took time out of my life, went into an intensive outpatient um, center, and I got help, right? Had I tried to be like all broken in front of everyone, but you can have hope. Who's, what kind of credibility is that? It's not credibility, right? It's just saying, I'm still broken and I haven't found any, you know. But now I can say, I took time out of my life to address what was wrong. And I found such freedom <laughs> in that healing. But it took a lot of work, and it was hard, and it sucked. And I had to acknowledge a lot of um, ugly things about myself, you know? Um, so just the, that kind of thing. Number two, acknowledge it in others. So my friend has gone through not an ugly divorce, but just a hard one. Um, for two years, she's been working minimum wage jobs, two of them to take care of her two children, living with family, um, trying to make ends meet, because her husband asked her to leave. He lives in Wisconsin, and her family is in Illinois. So she's the one that left. But she had nowhere to leave, too. So for two years, she's been rebuilding her life. This year, she got a job at a school, making a, a regular person's salary. Um, they got their own place. They're putting their life back together. The kids are healing more. And what I did, is I threw her a party this year. Two years later, I threw her a party to say, I see how hard you have been working. And look at your reward. Um, was it hard? It sure was. Um, but I'm so proud of you for doing that. And I think for her to feel acknowledged two years later was huge. Because I think people had stopped understanding what she was going through. Because you don't heal in two years whenever you feel like you've been thrown out like a piece of trash, right? Like, you keep that. Um, two, two of two, so that's a 2B. Um, <laughs> if you, um, 
If you think of what you want to, if you, if you think of someone in their mind, send it to them right now. So if you think of them, it's, it's the Holy Spirit telling you, you need to tell them something. So you need to tweet them. I don't understand Twitter, it's really hard for me, but you need to tweet them or uh, message them or whatever. Right, get, get out your cards, they're back there at the table. Um, <laughs> get out your cards and write them at that moment because that is the Holy Spirit telling you that you need to do something. I have heard from a lot of people in this room and a lot of people in my life that the cards that I send and the encouragement that I give comes at the right time. And it's not because <laughs> I have any control over it. It's because I listen and I'm intentional when the Holy Spirit tells me that I need to be doing something. And sometimes I don't get around to it for two weeks, but it still magically shows up right when it's supposed to be there. And so in my obedience, God is faithful, even if I'm not obedient right away. <laughs> um, and so if we can just choose to be obedient um, when he tells us to be, that's great. To pay attention. So when I'm in the Facebook group, I just write down names of people I see are having hard days. Someone who says that they're struggling with their marriage. Someone who um, maybe pulls away for a little bit. And you say, hmm, I haven't seen that name for a little while. Maybe I should send something. Um, pay, just pay attention, people. Be intentional. Okay? It's not hard. You're not too busy. You can do it. Um, <laughs> that's the soldier worker, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. And then um, just be receptive. Be open to hearing that from other people. So... Earlier today, I was a little stressed, and I, I couldn't even be receptive of Jamoff's hug. Because I was like, i got to put this table together, and I'm all stressed, and I'm going to be speaking later. And Jamoff acknowledged that I was stressed, and she let me go without feeling bad. And then later, I came up to her, and I said, I'm so sorry, <laughs> but I just couldn't handle it. And she gave, right, you gave me a hug. And that could have turned into a big, long talk about something. I don't know. But you just need to be receptive and open. Um, and you have to be okay with being in the background. Uh, today, uh, this morning, Randy's wife said, I forget her name. What's her name? Leanne. Leanne. I knew that. I knew that. So she said that her dream is to fan the flames of her husband and her children's dreams. <laughs> um, I'm not married. I don't have kids. But oh, my word. Yes. <laughs> right? That's what we need to be doing. We need to be fanning the dreams of the people in our lives. And as much as I like attention, because I really do, um, <laughs> I need to be okay with being the encourager who just sends it to someone, right? And not, I don't do it so you paste, like, you can stop posting pictures of what I send you on Facebook because I just don't do it for that. And I get a little, I get a little, okay. So, so be open to sharing your story and you're going to find some freedom, okay? So, um, as I was going through treatment, uh, these, the, this is the verse verses from the message that got me through. It's Matthew 6, 25 and 26. If you decide for God, oh, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> anyway, if you decide for God, living a life of God worship, it follows that you don't fuss about what's on the table at mealtimes or whether the clothes in your closet are in fashion. There's far more to your life than the food you put in your stomach, more to your outer appearance than the clothes you hang on your body. Look at the bird. Now listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Look at the birds, free and unfettered, not tied down to a job description, careless in the care of God. And you count far more to him than birds. Um, there's freedom in that. And if we just would all start living in our freedom, um, life would just be. So I don't have a clever ending, so there we go. 